Merry Christmas, everyone. In honor of this holiday, we will take a short break from the usual philosophy videos and we'll do some theology instead. Consider it a Weltgeist Christmas special. We will look in this video at Saint Anselm's famous little book, Cur Deus Homo, or Why Did God Become a Man? Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ on Christmas. In other words, they celebrate the day on which God decided to take on a human form. This has always presented somewhat of a theological problem. The question is, why would God do this in the first place? Christians generally accept that Christ was born and died on the cross in order to atone for our sins. But why was this necessary? Couldn't God set the matter straight without becoming human? This is the question Anselm sought to answer in his book with the appropriate title Why did God become a man? Saint Anselm was an Italian Benedictine monk who lived in the 11th century AD. Today, he is mostly known for formulating the so-called ontological proof of God's existence. We will not dive into that argument here, as it has been discussed at length both on YouTube and in the literature most famously by Immanuel Kant. More unknown, and more appropriate for this time of the year, is this work in which he seeks to answer the question of why Jesus was born in the first place. Why did God have to become human in order to atone for our sins? Let's dive in. Part 1. The Problem The basic assumption of Anselm's thought is that man is created by God for complete and total happiness. This happiness is found in a complete and total reciprocal love between God and man. In other words, a love that goes both ways. Man loves God, and God loves man. For this to be the case, man must give a free and convinced yes to God, Man must completely and willingly subject himself to God's grace and love, just as God gives himself completely in his love to man. But here is the problem. Throughout history, Anselm notes that mankind rejects God's love. Mankind says no to it. We are not ready to give our love unconditionally to God. There is a rejection of God's love. In Christian theology, this is exemplified by the story of Adam and Eve and the subsequent hereditary sin with which all post-Adamite humans are burdened. Importantly, this is not about the wickedness of a few godless individuals. Rather, this rejection of God's love is simply part of who we are. All of mankind rejects God's love because the problem is not with any individual person, or even a group of persons, the problem cannot be solved by an individual. In other words, there are probably a few individuals who happily return God's love, which is great, because in Anselm's view, these select few individuals truly understand the meaning of life and existence. But their love is not sufficient to solve the major problem of mankind as a whole rejecting God's love. This rejection even has a cosmological dimension. Because in all of creation, there is just one species who is even capable of saying yes, which is man. Mankind's rejection of God disturbs the harmonious equilibrium of the Creator's love for his creation, and vice versa. The consequence is that mankind is doomed to never experience the true happiness for which he was created. This is a bleak and unfulfilling state of being, a tragic fate. Even worse, man can't do anything about it. It's out of his hands. Part 2. The need for a solution. God created man so that man might be happy. He did this out of love for his creation. If, consequently, this dynamic of God's creation becomes disturbed, 
as happens with mankind's refusal to return God's love, then this is hurtful to God. God will not stand idly by and wants to remedy the situation out of love for mankind. Part 3. The Solution To restore the previous harmonious order, a gift of love is necessary. An affirmation of God's love that must be so huge it can overcome the collective no of all of mankind. This yes saying must come from mankind itself. Obviously, God cannot just say yes to himself and love himself. The problem is mankind's rejection, so the solution must come from mankind as well. But as we said previously, no individual person or group of people can ever affirm God's love enough to restore the balance. The required affirmation is so big in size that only God can give it. But it's up to mankind to fix this problem and not up to God. So, what is the solution? The answer of love can only be given by a being who is both completely God and completely human at the same time. That's why God became man. And that is what Christians celebrate every year at Christmas. Happy Holidays! We hope you enjoyed this Christmas special. It's a bit different from the usual philosophy, but hopefully this little piece of theological history was interesting. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe and click the bell button. And as always, thank you for watching and Merry Christmas!